Hello, I'm Gary, also known as the Solar Bus Guy. Today I'm going to show you how to make a really cool vegetable oil lamp. It runs on straight vegetable oil that you have in your kitchen right now. It's really cheap to burn, it's cheaper than candles, very easy to make, comes in real handy during emergencies when the power goes out, and uh, it's environmental because it doesn't use any kerosene or petroleum products, and it's real easy and fun to make. So let's get right to it. All right, so let's start by taking a look at what we need to make the oil lamp. Starting off, we need some vegetable oil. Uh, I'm using olive oil here, but it doesn't have to be olive oil. It can be any kind of vegetable oil, soybean oil, canola oil, whatever you happen to have around the house. An empty mason jar. This is a 16 ounce mason jar. You can experiment with different shapes and sizes of mason jars. Some, uh, Baling wire is what I call it. Uh, this is um, galvanized wire that I'm using right here that I got at the hardware store. Very easily, readily available. Some cotton yarn we're going to use to make the wick. You can also buy your own wicks. Um, pretty much uh, the same wicks that are used in little kerosene lamps uh, work fine. Uh, but I like to make my own and this is 100% cotton uh, yarn that works very well. A needle nose pliers with a built-in wire cutter, and a nail. Here we go, zoom in there. A nail. That's all we need. In just a few minutes, we'll have a brand new oil lamp. The first piece that we're going to start with is the wire. Wire is going to be used to make the wick holder, which is really the main part of the oil lamp. Alright, so I cut off a piece about this long. You can see that. And now we're going to get the nail. Okay, so here's our piece of wire that we cut and our nail. We have our needle nose pliers. And we're just trying to make something that is going to hold the wick up. Here's an example of what the wick is going to look like at the end. And we're just looking for something that's going to hold the wick up above the level of the vegetable oil. So we're going to start by making a little channel for the wick to be held up in. And that's accomplished by just wrapping the wire around the nail oh, three or four times. Sometimes it's easier with the tool, sometimes it's easier with your hands, but it's kind of fun. Once you have it wrapped a few times, you can use the pliers to kind of squeeze it all together, tighten it up a little bit, I'm going to squeeze it down. Okay, so you can see I'm just wrapping this wire right here. I have it four times around the nail, tightening it up a bit, squeezing it down. There. So it almost looks like a spring, but it's not a spring just a holder for our wick. There, we're halfway done. So now we just have to make a base for it to sit down in the bottom of the mason jar so that this part can hold it, hold the wick up above. So we're going to make a little 90 degree turn to go down a little bit. We don't need to go down very far because the wick just has to be up a little bit higher than the level of the vegetable oil. 
And so that's going to be the bottom there, and we're just going to make another bend. Now, now that we've gotten down to the bottom, we just want to make a base. This is, you can get creative if you want. You can make like a little spiral, or you can just be really basic and just, you can even wrap it around a square item, or make any kind of design you want for the bottom base. And once you have a base like that, then you want to turn up so you can make a little handle for it. Now I'm just making a really basic one. Sometimes I like to get fancy and get a little ornamental, but I just want to show you how it works. So, And then at the top, we're going to leave a little bit just for like a handle. So you can grab it. Take a look at the finished one. Now we want the handle to be not so high, not too high, so that we can still put a top on there. That's one of the, another cool thing about these is that they're they're kind of portable. You can put the top on there even when there's vegetable oil in there, and you can take it with you. You could go camping with it or. Okay, so now I've got a little handle, sort of, and now I can cut off the end, that's the extra. That's pretty much it. So now the, you want to tweak this thing a little bit and try to get the wick so it's in the middle of the base, not like bent off to the side. And you want to make sure that it's pointing straight up and down, not over to the side. Just by, just grab it, tweak it a little bit. So you just want to have it fairly stable with the wick in the middle, pointing more or less straight up, and you're done. All right, so we're going to set that aside for a minute. Now we're going to make the wick. Also very easy. Again, this is 100% cotton yarn. And we're just basically trying to make a piece of yarn that's thicker than the regular yarn. So we're going to take about, take a, maybe two feet of yarn there. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is double it over. So it's double, just like that. Then we're going to start twisting it. You want to kind of get it pretty well twisted. You start to feel like a tension there, and you know you got it pretty well twisted. Now, here's the little trick. You're going to have to grab it in the middle, and since you're holding it with your two hands, unless you have a friend here, you actually got to use your teeth. You're going to grab it right in the middle, and then pull the two ends together, and hold them together. Don't let go of here, but you can let go of there. What happens What is it just kind of twists itself up, makes a cool, perfect wick. You want to tie a knot here in the end so it, it stays nice and twisted and it doesn't unravel. And there you go. You have the wick. Now, all we have to do is thread the wick through our wick holder. It helps to kind of twist it as you push it through. As you can imagine, the tightness or the, the size of the hole that you left there with the nail affects how easy it is to get it through there, but I got it through pretty easily. Not a problem. So 
So guess what? We're just about ready. The only thing left now is to take take our little contraption here and set it to the right level. I find that having it peek up through the hole, I'd say that's maybe uh, less than a half inch. I don't know, you can eyeball it, but you want to play around with it. If you have it up too high, the flame gets too big, it just chars the um, wick and it's a waste of time. And of course, if it's too low, it won't light. Um, so you'll experiment and that's a good visual of about how I usually like to start it off with. I'm just going to drop it down in there. Nothing fancy going on here. All right, now we have um, some good old olive oil. This is the same stuff I cook with. And, um, but I find pretty much any kind of vegetable oil, soybean oil, canola oil, peanut oil, works great. So one of the keys to making this work right is to put the oil to the correct level. And that's because the oil has to defy gravity and go up the wick. And if it's too far, then it kind of slows down and it doesn't burn very well. So you want to kind of keep the level of the vegetable oil close to the bottom of your holder so that it doesn't have to travel all the way up the wick before it even gets there to be burned. Now this is a brand new wick. So what we're going to do, we really want to soak the whole wick in that vegetable oil. So I'm going to turn it over on its corner so the whole wick is in the vegetable oil. I'm going to let it sit there for a good 30 seconds or so. It's, it's hard to kind of get in there and get it to light because you have to hold the flame there for a little bit. So if you hold it up like this with your nice holder that you made, this works fine with a regular lighter. And you just hold it there for, you'll see, it'll take about maybe 10, 15 seconds before the wick lights by itself. There, yeah, just a little, little bit. You see that? It's growing. And it's going to turn into a flame that's about the same size as a candle flame. I find you can read by it. So there you go. You can drop it down in there now. So that's pretty much it. When you're ready to put it out, you can just blow it out. You can also carry a, a top to the mason jar with you. And when you put it out, put the top on, make sure it's nice and tight. And you can take this with you. And you're ready to start it up again. Same, same thing as before. Just be careful, it can be hot. See the second time a little it lit faster. So there's your oil lamp. Now I find, believe it or not, that I can get these oil lamps to burn 12 hours or more. I've gotten one to burn over 20 hours. And it's all about experimenting with different kinds of wicks, different thicknesses of wicks, how high or low the wick is. After a few hours, you'll notice the flame might go down a little bit. And you can actually just pour a little more vegetable oil in there so uh, it brings the level of the vegetable oil up closer to the flame and then the flame will get bigger again without doing anything else. But eventually you'll need to actually pull the wick through a little bit more. So let's take a look at that procedure. Okay now I'm going to show you how to restart the oil lamp which is a little bit different than the first time you start a brand new wick because as you can see now there's a little charred end, whereas before there was a fresh end of the wick. So when you're restarting, you're basically going to want to pull the wick through a bit like that, trim off the end, then pull it back down to about the same level like I mentioned before for starting, a, starting the flame. This is a good time to check your oil level down in the bottom and make sure it's, it's up high enough so that the, the oil doesn't have to wick up 
too high. And you're all ready to go. Start it just like we did before. And there we go. Now that's going to burn again for another 8 or 10 hours. If you watch your oil level, you might need to add a little oil in there sometime in the middle. You can experiment with different thicknesses of the wicks, different kinds of oil, different sizes of jars. You can get really creative. So that's about it for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you make your own vegetable oil lamp. Feel free to email me if you have any questions whatsoever. Check out the SolarBus Facebook page and the SolarBus website. And keep on keeping on.